Okay, guys, we're going to go over the basic fundamental principles of computer. This is kind of going to be a dry introductory, which is then going to get into a little bit heavier stuff as we go on through these PowerPoints. I'm referencing the Technology in Action book right now for this. It is a fifth edition. If you feel like you're left out on anything, feel free to go out and purchase the book. We're going to cover what computer literacy is and what the difference it is between being computer literate and being computer savvy what computers there are in careers, what future technologies there are, and the challenges of a digital society. What is it to be computer literate? Loosely defined, to be computer literate, you must be able to understand computers, understand their capabilities, and know their limitations. Basically, you need to know how to use a computer. As opposed to someone who's computer savvy, a computer savvy consumer can avoid hackers and avoid viruses. They can protect their privacy. They can understand the real risks of using the internet. And while they're online, they can avoid annoyances. They're going to be able to maintain and upgrade their computer whenever there's a problem. And they're going to be able to go out and make good purchase decisions when it comes time to upgrade or buy a new computer. They also have the capabilities to integrate the latest and greatest technologies, whether that being software or hardware. Computers are used pretty much in every career, guys. You should pretty much understand that no matter what you're doing, short of digging ditches, you're going to need to know how to use a computer. Information technology, or IT, involves information handling, information retrieval, computers, and telecommunication. The seven fastest growing occupations in the world are computer related. No matter what you do, computers are involved in your career. Whether it's business, retail, shipping, arts, or any of these categories listed, computers are influencing them all in a major way. Nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the science of using nanostructures. What nanostructures are, are very, very small molecules or very, very small objects. Nanoscience is the study of these nanostructures. If you pull out your phone, generally they have a SIM card in them, or possibly you have an expansion card like a micro scan disk card. They now have micro scan disk cards that go up to 16 gigabytes. In 1999, when I purchased one of my first computers, I had about a 16 gigabyte hard drive, and that thing was big. Because of nanoscience, you can now fit on basically the size of your thumbnail, 16 gigabytes of information. Nanoscience is the future of technology. Everything in computers is going to be because of nanoscience. With great power comes great responsibility. There are a lot of challenges facing a digital society. One of the most obvious is privacy risks. When you go on the internet, it's like walking down New York City. There's streets that you know you can go on, and then there's some back alleys you really don't want to go down because you're either going to get robbed or you're going to catch a virus. The fact of the matter is, you need to know where to go on the internet and where not to go. If you end up going down these bad back alleys, you risk getting your personal ID stolen. A lot of times viruses and other things come in on software that you downloaded and didn't realize you got a Trojan horse. These things are called malware. A form of malware is spyware. Spyware collects data off your computer about you and then will send you emails basically soliciting you to buy products that they now know that you like. It will also give you pop-ups for things that they now know that you like. All of this is based off cookies. But again, this is in a future chapter, so I don't really want to touch on it too much right now. When you're out of college, we pretty much as professors have the ability to monitor your emails. As long as your computer is connected to one of our networks, we can pretty much go in and see what you're seeing. When you go to work, your boss can pretty much do the same thing. If you're in any real business, your boss has a computer system that will allow him to see what you're seeing on your screen. Yet another reason to do your work when you're at work. Copyright infringement is one of the largest challenges of a digital society. 
more and more regulations are trying to come out to protect our copyrighted laws. The problem is the internet is a worldwide society and American copyright laws may not fit with Japan's copyright laws. So for right now, copyright infringement is still a major problem to regulate on the internet. There's becoming an over-reliance on computers for security and for life in general. Imagine just for a second what it would be like if everything that you owned that was based off a computer and electronics just stopped working. It's kind of scary. When you think about it, everything that you use to really function anymore is based off of some sort of computer technology. A really good hacker can write a really good code that might be able to shut this all down. What would we do if everything that was computers just stopped working? There's also a digital divide. Society is really moving on with computers. And if you're not on that computer train, you're going to be left behind. So my best advice for you is take this class seriously and take computers very seriously. Because if not, you're going to be left behind and then you're going to end up being that ditch digger. Let's talk a little bit about computers and their parts. We're going to talk about the functions of a computer, what data is versus what information is, what bits and bytes are, how to input data, how to output data, what the system unit is, and ergonomics. There are four major functions to a computer. Inputting data, outputting data, processing data, and storing data. This is rather easy to understand. You're inputting data every time you move your mouse and every time you type on a keyboard. You're outputting data every time that you look at a computer screen or every time you print a document or every time you play a sound. For these two to work together, that data has to be processed. So your CPU does all the processing. Every so often, you want to access data later on. That is why you need to be able to store data. These are the four main functions of a computer. Input, output, process, store. Such as a cold ID card. 